what's up everybody welcome back to our channel i'm peter and i'm yin and for almost the past three months we have been traveling all around amazing turkey we absolutely love this incredible country the people are friendly and welcoming the landscapes surreal and food is fantastic we could honestly go on yeah but this is gonna be unfortunately our last video from here in turkey before we head back home to new zealand and so before we leave we thought we'd share with you all some helpful tips that might help you if you're planning your trip here too. Yeah, you may already be aware of things like when is the best time to travel here seasons wise and you might have already clued yourself up on common scams that you may come across in places like Istanbul. But in this video, we're going to delve a little bit deeper and we hope that it's going to help you when you're planning your own awesome turkey adventures too. So, shall Let's we jump, jump into, into it? it? Yeah. Starting off, one of the biggest tips that I have is to try and save a bit of money, especially on the Forex. There are a ton of different banks here in Turkey and they can charge you up to 10% for simply withdrawing your money. So what Yen and I have done is we've gone with a global bank called Wise or TransferWise and we do all our foreign exchange within the bank, changing from our native New Zealand currency to the currency of the country that we're in. That normally charges you around about 4%, which is quite an acceptable fee. But then on top of that, what you'll want to do is find a bank or an ATM machine that won't charge you any more additional fee. And so what we've found is that Zera actually doesn't charge you any additional fee. But I've actually gone to all of the different banks here in Turkey and tried to withdraw the money. And some of them can charge you up to 10% for simply withdrawing from an ATM. So you'll want to try and avoid that. Traveling between cities in Turkey is very convenient. There are multiple bus companies to choose from, but if you don't want to take a bus, you can also catch a domestic flight instead. If you're planning on visiting any of the smaller or more remote towns around Turkey, you can usually get a flight there, but you need to know that going between one small town to another small town by flying is not usually as convenient. So often you'll need to go back to a main city like Istanbul or Ankara and then take another flight from there to your next town. That's why taking a bus is way more convenient. It's also a lot cheaper than going by flying. And if you're interested in learning more about how to take the buses around domestically, we've made a video where we went to Cappadocia, which shows a bit more about that. So you can check that out over here. We'll put a link up there or in the description below. One of the things that Yen and I absolutely love about traveling around Turkey is it's very convenient. The infrastructure is fantastic. And from, from big cities to the small towns, besides from the normal taxis that you can get everywhere, you've also got things like buses, trams, trains, as well as ferries. Inside the big cities, what you'll want to do is typically pick up one of the city cards. So right now we're in Istanbul, and we've got the Istanbul card. And then you're going to be able to go pretty much anywhere you want to. You can use Google as an aid and you just tap on and you don't even need to tap off because it's a fixed rate, which typically ranges from around 7 lira to 12 lira. It's incredibly convenient. And another thing which is quite different from other cities that we've been to is there's also these things called a domosh, which is like a small minivan which you can catch and get to various stops like the exact stop that you want to go to. So what you'll typically want to do is go to a Domush station, look for a guy who can help you out and just tell them like, oh, I want to go to this specific place and they'll point you to the right Domush. The Domush generally take cash, normally around 10 lira is what we found. And once you get on, they'll typically be like, hey you, this is your stop now, which is really convenient. One thing that you will have to know as you're traveling around Turkey is that if you're going to the touristic centers, things can be a lot more expensive for that whole specific area. Like this area that we're in right now, Sultanahmet, you'll see a lot of beautiful sites, but food especially can be much more expensive than your local neighborhoods. Up to three or five times the price and it's really hard to find a locally priced meal. 
if not impossible. And what you'll also find is that accommodation in these areas in general are a lot more expensive, but you still are able to find some steals if you look hard enough. You're weighing up in one hand the higher prices to the convenience of being right next to all these amazing locations. Being able to step outside your accommodation and walk right to the Hagia Sophia or Blue Moss is a massive plus in my opinion and it might be something that you want to consider. Another thing that we've noticed, especially coming from New Zealand, is that the smoking culture here is particularly strong. There are a lot of smokers, and especially in densely populated cities like here in Istanbul. It can be very difficult to avoid secondhand smoke, and even when you're sitting indoors, because even though smoking is generally not allowed indoors, there are windows and doors that are usually open, so it just tends to waft in. It can be quite a shock to your system if you're not used to it, especially like us. What might surprise a lot of people about Turkey is that it is a secular nation. Even though the majority of the population are Muslim, it is very liberal here. And in fact, even as a tourist, as you go into the one of the largest cities especially, you don't have to dress as conservatively as you might imagine. However, if you do go to a mosque, which we definitely recommend because they are very beautiful, you do have to be mindful and respectful of the dressing norms there. So as a guy, you'll need to wear a t-shirt at least, as well as some long pants, and as a female, Email, you'll have to cover up yourself and also wear a headscarf. And what you'll need to do also is before you enter the mosque, you'll need to take off your shoes and leave it outside. Another thing to note is that there is a call to prayer that runs throughout the day and night, which plays for a couple of minutes each time that comes from the mosque and it goes over loudspeakers. Another cultural norm to keep in mind is tipping. So it's a good idea to keep small notes on you at all times. If you're going to dine out at a restaurant or stay in a hotel, then you should definitely tip. As a very general guide, you'll want to give around 5 to 10% of the total bill if you are dining out. And you'll also want to look out for something called a service fee because if that's written there, then that's generally considered your tip already. If you're staying at a hotel, don't forget the bellboys who help with your luggage, at least around 10 lira per bag. And it's also very nice to leave something for the housekeeping too. If you've got a really awesome tour guide, great to give a tip to them as well as a bonus. And also, if you're coming out of a metered taxi, then don't be surprised that the fare gets rounded up and you don't receive any change back because that's quite a common practice here as well. Another thing that's really surprised Yen and I about Turkey is the amount of stray dogs and cats that there are. But what's even surprised us more is how well taken care of that they are. You're often going to find bowls of water as well as handfuls of food all throughout the various neighborhoods so that our furry friends over here can eat. And what we've also learned during our time here is that vets on their off days will often go around their neighborhoods to check up on the neighborhood cats and dogs. The dogs are often quite chubby and they're napping throughout most of the day and the cats are very inquisitive. They'll often nudge up on you, especially when you're eating a meal, trying to test their luck and trying to get a piece to eat as well. They're super lovely and cute too. When it comes to food, don't be afraid to get adventurous. There is so much good food here in Turkey. It is more than just kebabs, although kebabs are incredibly delicious here too. There is such good street food as well. And when you are going to go around to the different regions, it's very fun to research what the local specialties are because they're often incredibly tasty and very unique too. One thing to be mindful of is when Ramadan is on because you'll want to avoid eating in public during those periods because there are people that are fasting. So it's just a matter of respect.
One of the things that Yen and I absolutely love about Turkey is when you travel through to different regions, you're going to be able to see something totally different and awesome. Whether it's the incredible landscapes of Cappadocia or Kamukale, or visiting the Antalya region and seeing the Mediterranean Sea with your own eyes, and also seeing all the ancient ruins of cities that used to call the region of Anatolia home. It is so super impressive. Or you could come to a cosmopolitan city like Istanbul, but it's also so deep with history. There is absolutely something for everyone. Bonus item. We mentioned it briefly in the intro, but Turkish people are some of the friendliest you will ever meet, especially if you put in a little bit of effort yourselves too. Most can speak a little bit to very good English, especially in the popular tourist destinations like here in Istanbul. However, not everyone does. So it's always handy to learn a couple of keywords and phrases to get you by. It's also a great way to enrich your experience while you're here in Turkey. And it's always fun to be able to converse a little with locals in their own language as well. The effort is always appreciated. A couple of keywords to get you along are things like merhaba, Gnaiden, Teşekkürüm, and numbers can come in handy too. Give me. Give me. Alright guys, I think we're going to wrap up the video here and unfortunately it means that our trip in Turkey is going to come to an end very soon. I have loved this place and I can't believe the three months have flown by so quickly but now that I think about it we've actually done so much stuff here because we have so many videos which we'll leave a playlist of somewhere around here so you guys can check it out too. For those who have been watching along during our turkey travels we hope you've enjoyed it as much as we have too and if there's anything that anyone can add to this list who's been to turkey or who lives here please do add them in the comments below we hope you guys have found this video useful especially if you're planning your own trip here to turkey as well if you did please remember to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already and if you can share our video because that always helps our channel and we greatly appreciate it we will catch you guys next time see everybody